Hello, welcome to the Freak Show, Bumpy Mix Squigum Zero, and I thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Episode 11 is upon us, and we are in the middle of the murder mystery. So we have some more clues to find. Let's go check out the bloody wall. The walls are covered in splattered and smeared blood, most of which is hardened into a crusty, congealed paste. Perfect for spreading on toast, or perhaps onto a spoon if you are really, really, really desperate and hungry. No? No? Okay. Thick tracks of it run laterally. It looks like the blood has been deliberately smeared. Hey, Squigs. I don't know a whole lot about science or all that, but I know what blood looks like when it hits a wall. This isn't natural. Somebody deliberately smeared blood all over these walls. So See how it looks like it's got paint trails? That's because somebody used Tong's parts like a brush. That's disturbing. That's, that's not pleasant. So they painted the walls with his blood? Why? Do I look like a psychologist to you? Maybe because they're a freak. Maybe they're one of those sick serial killers that sees their murders as art. I got no clue. All I know is what normal blood looks like on a wall, and well, this ain't it. Some people have a bad grasp of art. I knew this guy in, Qu in Quang Tongue who used to make music out of stray radio static and panic button calls. Called it Crisis Wave. Well, it was awful. Doesn't sound very good. Alright, let's go take a peek inside the door. And what do we have here? We have a bathroom, a safe, and a SimSense editor. We'll check the bathroom first. Tong's bathroom is immaculate, and the drains are tiny. Whatever killed him didn't exit through here. The desk safe. Tong's desk drawers are open, and the safe that's built into one side has been opened. There's no sign of tampering, and the green light next to the word unlocked is blinking. Whoever opened the safe did it with a key fob. Inside are several blank cred sticks, but no sign of any with money on them. Looks like someone looted his stash. A guy like this wouldn't keep only empty cred sticks in his safe. Well, there is that, so somebody stole some cash monies from him. Some Anuyan, if you will. This is a Yamaha 95000V SimSynth, a device for mixing and mastering SimSense chips. Several drive bays are empty and all of the chip jacks are empty. The screen is flashing a repeated error message. Warning, requested files cannot be found. Please return drives to bay and try again. Well, I can't debug the system, but Isobel can, so let's have her do it. Isobel rattles out some commands on the SinSith's keyboard, stepping away after a few seconds with a look of satisfaction on her face. There, I put the drive warning on suspend. It's, a di it's in diagnostic mode only, though. Maybe we'll learn something? Maybe not. Yamaha SimOS 5.23. Uh, system diagnostic check. Memory OK. Drive error. Assist bus OK. Begin core dump. Uh, please wait. Isabel studies the screen in detail as letters and numbers scroll by. Looks like Tong was cooking some BTLs, better than life chips here. He's hacked the peak controller output cutoffs. The delta levels on the SIM chips are usually around 4 to 5, 6.5 for CalHots. His delta peaks are pushing 12, that's brain burning territory squigs. And all the drives and chips those BTLs were stored on are missing. I never liked Tong, but it wasn't because he was a bad guy. I didn't like any of the elders, but if he was cooking chips at Delta 12, maybe he burned somebody he shouldn't have. Maybe they flipped their lid and came after him, or a relative did. This about gives you a serious look, tipping her head at the synth. Uh, the metahuman brain can't handle this kind of output. It'll shut down after a few of those. Alright, so for those of you who are completely new, and again, I may butcher some of the lore guys, I'm going off of uh, probably a couple of years of rusty lore from playing Shadowrun Returns. But BTL are better than life chips, and essentially what it is is a lot of these people are deckers, or they have basically computers attached to their body, to their brain and stuff, and they can go into like cyberspace. So they have these BTL chips, which they would actually insert into them, and then they would be in like this virtual reality, and it would affect them in like every way, you know whatever they see or touch or feel would actually affect them that way so they would basically just sit there in virtual reality the whole time like literally experiencing it obviously when they eat they wouldn't get food like the body wouldn't get that kind of nourishment but they would think that they were getting that so people would get these better than life chips and they would pretty much just waste away into nothing and get skinny and die off because they're living this whole new type of life just through the uh, chip that's jacked into their skull so 
that's a very very poor probably trans translation or explanation of what a BTL chip is but that should give you a rough idea all right so we've done that uh, I guess we could talk to Porter Lamb again hey there need something else what do you do around here Porter yeah, it's a catch-all category, I guess. I work for Elder LP. It's a bit like being a deputy. I make sure people don't break the rules, protect people who need protecting. Mostly, I just do whatever LP asks me to do. It's a pretty quiet job most days. Today is not one of those days. I also handle a lot of ma handle a lot of maintenance. I don't actually do the repairs, but I've got most of the keys. It makes it easy to ensure only authorized people get into sensitive places. Electricity goes down, I let in the electrician who fixes the wiring. Toilets clogged, I let the I let in the drone guy who opens it back up. Eh, okay. Looks like somebody went through Tong's things. Has anyone else been inside? Not since I've been here, but before LP found him? Could have been anybody, really. LP had a key to his place, but the lock's total crap. Anybody half decent with a crack at cracking mag locks could have gotten inside. What's missing? His BTLs, hard drives, cred sticks are all missing. Sounds like the killer looted this or his place to me. All this talk of monsters. Yeah, sure, there are scary things that go bump in the night. But most of the scary bumps I hear are from handguns and gangers. Alright, man, I'll see you later, buddy. Thanks for alleviating some... Uh, wow, these people are just like super morbid. They're like, we want inside the shop. Show us his dead body. It's creepy. Alright, what's this dude got to say? Zippy. What's up, Zips? This orc is busily snacking on a steamed bun. As you approach, he wipes off one of his hands and sticks it out toward you. Hey, stranger, nice to see you. Zip it toe tag at your service. How are you liking Wampoa Garden? I'm Squigs. Nice to meet you, Zippy. Nice to meet you, too. Listen, I know it's a little forward of me just to say hello and whatnot, but I'm interested in giving you a hand if I can. Zippy gestures expansively at the squalid, neon-lit streets of Wampoa Garden. This is my home, at least for the time being, and I'd like to stop these killings. Well, we've never met before this, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. The elders had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gon and Elder Nakamura after they got ripped apart, but I didn't want to dig any deeper. So, since I don't know you and I can smell a shadow runner a mile away, you've got to be the outsider they asked to stop the killings, right? Sippy tilts his head back. Obviously pleased at his amateur deduction. Um, nothing gets by you, does it? Show off. Yes, you're right. Very astute, that's right. Nothing gets by you, does it? See, I have good eyes. A lot of good eyes, actually. If you're in the market for replacements, only slightly used. And they only come from certified donors, I swear. A hearty a belly laugh erupts from the orc, and he slaps one of his thighs in elation. Man, I kill myself. Pretty funny, you a stand-up comedian? That was awful. Make a joke like that again, and maybe I'll kill you first. <laughs> you a stand-up comedian with jokes like that? Are you kidding me? I'm one of the only trained surgeons around here. I keep the other Wampoans healthy. Gotta practice down the road. Blind Chen's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an implant specialist, and that's it. How'd you end up here? I did my residency back at UCAS. Could have become a real MD, too, if things hadn't gone south for unrelated reasons. Zippy opens his coat, revealing the cyber deck. He pats it proudly. I also deck a little, but I'm better at slicing skin than I see. Uh, Wampoa Garden seemed a good fit for me. You must have a lot of customers, so it's pretty peaceful around here. For the most part, other than these killings, we don't have much by the way of problems. We do information security for the triads, and that makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. Anyone starts something, we hit them with, hit them in the matrix while our triad friends hit them in meat space. There you go. Some small gangs have tried pushing in here before, but they backed off and they figured out that we, that they weren't just picking a fight with Tang and his guys, but with both the Red Dragon and Yellow Lotus. They got the message real quick. What was left of them, anyway? You must have a lot of customers. Um, okay. Uh, that's the chip truth. The chip truth, apparently, folks. Was it like Lay's? Are we talking Ruffles? What are we talking here? What kind of chips? Because I'm all for chips. Chips are delicious, by the way, guys, in case you didn't know. I have to charge to cover my costs and eat, but it's damn near free service. There's always a waiting list, but it's good, honest work. I like helping my neighbors and the, and the community. We all look out for each other. Somebody messes with one of us, they mess with all of us. That kind of community is rare as gold these days. How many places have an ethos like that? Not the damn corpse, that's for sure. 
I've lived a lot of places, done my fair share of shadow running, but this place is special. It's been a long time since I really felt like anywhere was a real home. Zippy looks off past you toward the Wampoan Garden streets. His expression grows wistful, like he's remembering something from a long time ago. I'm sure I'll move again, but not for a while. I'm not done with the city or these people. Let me ask you about Wampoa Garden. Sure thing, what do you want to know? What are your thoughts on the murders? There's a sharp intake of breath as Zippy shakes his head. Pretty gruesome business. Gan died from a broken neck, looked like someone had wrenched it around, and his arms and legs were cut off, some skin flayed away too. Nakamura had his throat ripped out by someone with pretty sharp teeth. At first, at first I thought it was a devil rat, but the teeth marks were all from something with a humanoid jaw. I didn't look at Yatunde. From what I saw at distance, it was the same story. Didn't see much point, since I had already seen it twice. As for Tong, from what Porter told me, it was Gon and Nakamura all over again. You take a look at him? Yeah, it's the same as you described the others. Zibby shakes his head sadly. Damn, I like Tong, too. The BTL business is unsavory, but the man had to eat, and his regular sims were great. Generally, all-around nice guy. Friendly with everyone, never had anyone mad at him. There ain't no justice, let me tell you. Can you tell me about the elders? Zippy laughs, shrugging. Well, they're an eclectic bunch, that's for sure. Where to start? NG's a spiritual leader. She's the voice of the Wampoans, I guess. A lot of her close friends are really more of followers, and she's something of a priest for the machine spirits. Maybe it's a cultural thing for people who grew up here, but it's never called to me. Still, she makes a damn fine pot of tea. LP's the muscle, and has an encyclopedic um, encyclopedic knowledge of cyber and bioware. It's probably IP, guys. I'm sorry. I think I've been saying LP all this time, but it's probably IP. That's a capital I, I'm almost certain. So, my apologies, folks. Uh, definitely a good guy to have watching your back. Not too friendly, but you know how it is. You get a lot of cyber. People start wondering if you'll tear their arms off. Hmm. Zippy makes a chopping gesture with one hand. He's got booze straight out of Blood Carnival 3, The Reckoning. Terrible movie, but great fight choreography. What about Tang? I didn't know much about him, but I think he's got some kind of fetish for automation. Found him cooing over some trids of automated delivery drones in a warehouse once. He works with drones, has a shop called the Blessed Autofab. He was raving about the efficiency of the movement patterns or something. You already know about Tong, Ran Sims, BTLs, Skill Chips. Ken Gan used to be city planner before he had a nervous breakdown and got involved in statistical analysis. Zippy pauses to collect his thoughts. Nakamura came from uh, Fuku 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 Oh wow, guys, Fukuoka, and was interested in entertainment. Trid mostly. Spent a lot of time analyzing subliminal subliminals in ads. Wow, it's a lot of stuff. Then there was Magpie. She was the chief decker, hot as hell against IC, and built her own hardware. Salty old woman, though. Never met anyone who was quite as shrill or nasty when she was mad. She was mad most of the time. Tell me more about her. Not much to tell, really. Zippy shrugs noncommittally. Maybe a month ago, she just up and disappeared. I went to her shop one day, and she just wasn't open. Nobody had seen her since. Why would she disappear? No idea. One day she was here, the next poof. At first I thought she was just on vacation, since she had mentioned wanting to go see the Kingdom of Hawaii someday. But it didn't feel right. She would have at least told me she was leaving. It seemed mighty suspicious to me. Nobody else seemed to care what happened to her, probably because she pissed them all off so bad. A little odd for her to disappear, don't you think? Is there any place you think I should start looking? I'll well, say that's a little bit odd. Of course it's odd. She owed me lunch, too, and she was the sort who paid her debts promptly. You might want to check out her shop, it's all locked up, but the other elders have a spare key. Couldn't hurt to look around, and even though Magpie was always butting heads with the other elders, they wouldn't have any reason not to let you in. What do you mean they were butting heads? Magpie and the other elders never saw eye to eye. She was contrary for the sake of it. Most of the rest had a grand vision for what they wanted this neighborhood to become. Magpie just wanted to deck. She was only an elder because she needed someone because oh, they needed someone with her matrix chops. The last big argument was between her, NGLP, sorry, IP, and Nakamura. It was over something relatively trivial. I think Nakamura wanted to expand the pirate trid business into the matrix, and she just absolutely refused. 
And why did she refuse? She sounds like she didn't care for entertainment taking precedence over business. That's exactly it. She gave Nakamura an earful, let me tell you. She said something about not using up valuable bandwidth for trivial entertainment bullcrap. Anyway, I went from there into this rant about how she wasn't going to let Tang expand his drone business any further because it would get too much Megacorp attention. They accused her of blocking them just because she could, which is probably true. Lots of screaming. What do you mean blocking them? Everybody needs her matrix skills for their business to run pop properly. There are other deckers, me, say, or Mo Janebi. Um, but she had the infrastructure. If their project didn't interest her, she wouldn't even give them the time of day. She's a real hardhead about having her time wasted, but she figures if she's not interested in something, it has no value objectively. Kind of a major blind spot, if you ask me. Sounds like she was critical. Could you let me into her shop? Yes and no, she was, but since she disappeared, Elder IP's taken over running the Matrix infrastructure. He's not as good at it as she was, but his experience with drones makes him the best candidate. They wouldn't entrust something like that to anyone who wasn't an elder, so there you go. Alright, and the plot thickens. A little bit of uh, hate on hate for the uh, elder action there. Let's go see if we can look around and see if there's anything else to find out. And it looks like this might be another uh, episode of us wandering around, uncovering a little bit more of the mystery. Hey, there's a breaker guy here. Breaker Hui. An imposing troll stands in front of a stall overflowing with weapons of all sorts. Pistols, rifles, and even brass knuckles overflow onto the rug around him. Ho oh there, you look like a man who understands the value of self-defense. Breaker Hui. At your service, and I can promise you, I can help you defend yourself. What do you say? Want to take a look? Yeah, I'm more interested in information right now. Yeah, tell me what you want. Maybe I can help you out. You know anything about the murders? Just that the elders have been getting hacked apart. I've tried to stay away from it all. No sense painting the crosshairs on my own forehead, right? The troll shrugs indifferently. I'm nobody important, and I aim to keep it that way. What are your impressions of the elders? Can't say I associate with much with them. They organize big trade deals with the Loho Joa pirates, the triads, and legitimate businesses. They tell us if somebody's being blacklisted and dispense justice when someone breaks the rules. Beyond that, they just leave us alone and I leave them alone. I'm just not important enough to register on their radar. You know anything about an elder magpie? Never met her, thank God. She ran with the Deckers mostly. She, uh, since she dealt in chips and software. I heard she was hard to work with. I think the phrase I overheard was that she shrieked like a harpy with a fresh corpse. <laughs> I don't know. You should ask Zippy, though. He's a sharp one with a deck. So he'd know her better than most. Well, aside from Tong, who slings BTLs around here? The Red Spear Gang. They run up in here sometimes, but don't cause any trouble. Check out the parking garage south of here, though. They usually hole up in there. Step light, though. If they don't know you and you cop an attitude, they'll put you in the ground. Funny thing, I heard there was a shootout with some Hong Kong police in a garage a month ago. I was away in Beijing at the time, so I didn't see it directly, but everybody was talking about it when I got back. Why is that funny? Because we don't let the HKPF in here most times. We shoot at them if they even try. Every time they come in here, it's bad for us, because they always look for a scapegoat. Why would the elders let them in? Nobody knows. Alright, man. See you later. Actually, I want to take a look at your goods, too. Show me what you got, buddy. Alright. Looks like you got some pretty decent stuff here. A shock glove. Ooh, that's pretty interesting. kind of like that idea, but eh. Alright, so let's see here. Is there anything worth getting? So this is a shotgun. This is a rifle. And this is an SMG. I think we're fine. Still with what we have. I'm okay with it. Alright, what's this dude? Hey, it's Mo Jnebi. The man in front of the stall is rooting through a box of music chips and swift, with the swift fingers of someone who knows what they're looking for. Behind him, a music player pumps out a constant stream of distorted, atonal music. The stall's proprietor is nowhere to be seen. Can you believe this? They've got four bootlegs of Echelon 60, the unreleased Enoch 
Ian Keys double chip shows from uh, Brazzaville, but absolutely zero chips from Shotgun Bloom. This stall stuff is purely second rate. Hey man, don't get down on Echelon 60. I saw them when they played at the unlicensed show at the old Choco Tart Factory out in Suen Wan. The show was amazing, even if the police had to break it up midway through the second set. The music aficionado waves a hand dismissively. The show might have been great, but come on, Echelon 60's old news. They're already being mainstreamed. I saw a trid, I saw a trid ad for the new Mitsubishi Astro Scooter, and they were using main volt under bus as the ba as the backing music. Made me sad, I tell you. The Decker inclines his head politely towards you. Mo Janebi at your service. Decker, technologist, music fan. You're not from around here, are you? You hold yourself like a native. You don't hold yourself like a native. Not Wampon Garden, no. Mo runs a hand through his hair, shaking a shaking the collected rain off of it. I thought so. What brings you out here? I'm trying to find out who's been killing the stupid elders. The Decker pauses a moment, face falling. Oh, that's nasty business. I heard Tong died tonight. I don't know who or what they pissed off, but it seems like a really bad scene. I'm trying to keep my nose out of it still. I like this place. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, what can you tell me about the Wampoans? Well, they're a collection of freaks, geeks, nerds, and tech junkies. This place may look like a third world bazaar, but believe me, we have stuff here that's cutting edge in almost every field. Mo swells with pride and plants both hands firmly on hips. Maybe it's not as advanced as the stuff the Megas have in their development labs, but it's as advanced as anything you can find in a store. People come from all over the world to buy and sell here and work out deals for big shipments. We've got contacts with every pirate and smuggling group in the South China Sea and every major syndicate and gang in the Free Enterprise Zone knows not to mess with us. Not only are there a lot of us, nobody wants to lose what we're selling. Okay. The Red Dragon made a play four years ago, but we chased him out. Oh, gestures with both hands as if shooing away a bothersome insect. Scooted off back to Ho Man Tin, and they've never been back. Good for you, that's how you survive. That sounds dangerous, you must have pissed them off. It's all about playing the angles. Yeah, it pissed them off, but then we sold goods to the Yellow Lotus at a discount. In exchange, the Yellow Lotus kept them off our backs. You don't have to beat up the big guy to win, you just have to make him step back so the other big guy sees he's off balance. Stand-up fights are for the Megas. We're about survival, just like everyone else in the shadows. So, do you know anything about the murders? Uh, I'm trying to stay as far away from it as possible. I'm not connected enough to hear anything important, and all the talk about monsters is just plain dark. I'm not afraid of monsters, but I don't want to get their attention. All I know is that a couple of months ago we had elders Nakamura, Yatendi, Gan, and Magpie, and now we don't. I've heard about Magpie. Sounds like she was kind of vicious. To be blunt, she was a she's a hateful, shrewish old badger of a person. It was always her way or the highway. She'd butt heads with other elders over damn near anything. Uh, the last fight she had was with Tang over something or another. I guess she ended up throwing some of his micro drones into a deep fryer and threatening to kick his butt around the block. What was her line of business? Matrix gear. Her shop's called The Jack Point. Not very imaginative, I know. She always had the hottest programs, best chips, and made some killer decks for anybody willing to pay her rates. It cost plenty of new yen, but she was one of the best in the business, at least in Hong Kong. If you want to know more about her, you should talk to Zippy. He's one of the only people around here who got along with Magpie. You can probably find him by the MTR station. He loves the steam bun cart over there. So what's your area of expertise? I'm a decker. I used to be a company man for years, pushing code on their servers, smearing the little cyber pukes that would try to get into our secure systems. I made a pretty good living. Had my own place on the 48th floor in a corporate skyscraper. That was the kind of thing the Sims teach you everybody reaches for. The dream life. Well, how'd you end up here? I found out the company wasn't, well, what I thought it was. Sure, they paid me well and kept me in creature comforts. But I accidentally looked over some misfiled reports while clearing out company data store. Turned out one of the company's security riggers had gotten drunk and blabbed about some project or another being over budget and behind schedule. That's not good. That's it'd be a fireable offense, right? Mo purses his lips, his gaze going distant for a moment. Well, I guess upper management was worried that the info would hurt their stock ratings by a fraction of a point or two. So they fired the guy. With a Point three zero eight round right through the skull. Okay, that does seem a bit dramatic. 
You should have known that's how corporations handle problems. Wait, they shot him over a fraction of a point? It may only have been a fraction well, may have only been fractions of a point, but that was still tens of millions of Nuyans. I guess that went beyond a firing offense, directly into murder territory. What's worse, since I now knew about both the project and the murder, I could have been next in the firing line. I knew I wasn't worth the expense to hunt down as long as I kept my head down, so I came out here looking for like-minded deckers. I guess I ended up staying because I could get a semblance of community out here, and I couldn't get that many other places. Alright, man. See you later, Mo. Deuce, deuce, player. Deuce, deuce, holla. No, kidding. We're not quite that chummy with him. I mean, he may be a chummer, but still. Alright, folks. Let's take a look. You know what? I think we could probably break it off here. We'll talk to Kiet Kieta, I guess, soon, and then Demoringo. I mean, we still got some stuff, but it seems to me, just based on the information we've gathered so far... I would say that Magpie maybe disappeared, they did something to her, and they didn't kill her, but now she's coming back to murder everyone, or one of her friends or family members is coming back to kill off all the others because of whatever they did to Magpie. Maybe Magpie did die, I don't know. But that does seem to be kind of where I'm leaning. I could be totally wrong, though. That's from the information gathered so far, that seems to be what's going on. Anyway, folks, that's my very, very poor deduction of what's actually happening right now but we'll see in the future what is all going down hopefully hopefully soon anyway guys until the very next episode my name is bumpy mcsquiggums thank you for stopping by the freak show and i will see you later